Well, it's coming into the season now of um, uh, uh, resurrection time. Amen. I know people tell you all the time that you know, Easter, that's not a real name of Resurrection Day and all that. I, I use that just because you know when it is. It's on your calendar like that, amen. And I'm not afraid of that. That doesn't scare me any more than Halloween scares me. Halloween is, is not uh, any kind of biblical holiday. The 31st of October is, uh, is a day that the Lord has made. We don't celebrate the devil, amen. And we don't use the words that, uh, that uh, means something else for that. We're, we're not into demonism. And we're not into worrying too much about Santa Claus. Are you with me? Right. I mean, you know, Santa's not the devil. Yeah. Amen. And uh, we're, we don't worship Santa. Amen. And uh, we lie to our children and tell him he's real. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, but uh, we, we're not worried about that. And I don't worry about saying Easter once in a while, please. It's resurrection day, that's what happened, amen? We know that. But don't get religious about it. Don't be weird about it. It's on your calendar, it's okay to say that. And I'm not saying that to be rude or, or sacrilegious or anything. I think Christians get way too uh, sheriffy. You know, we all become little jello sheriffs. And, 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 and correct each other on what we say. You know, if we, did, if we quit that, we might have a little, little less strife in our life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's, I'm not going to correct your every word. You know, I did correct somebody the other day because they were saying that their wife was going to be in a wheelchair. She's sick and she's having a hard time. He said, well, next thing is going to be in a, you know, she's going to be a wheelchair, in a wheelchair. I said, don't you speak that over her. I did, I correct that. Now there, you can say something, amen? amen? Come on now, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Don't speak that over your wife, for pity's sake. Young people, I said, you're not, I was down at the men's conference. I said, you're not, that is not right, don't say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well, repent. <laughs> amen, but we know that's the truth. But anyway, we're coming in to our, our season here of, of the Easter season of the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's what we celebrate on Easter. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about his resurrection. It's not about the name of, that the world calls it, whatever. It is about resurrection, amen. But you know, the, the gospel, uh, first of all, does anybody know the definition of the gospel? Huh? Truth, that's good. Good news, that's good. But what is the good news? Thank you, thank you. You know it. You, these two ladies right here got it. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. You, you have listened before, huh? That's good. No, that's, that, that's right. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. We were talking about this the other day with a bunch of guys sitting at lunch. And, uh, you know, what, what are we here to do? We're here to proclaim his death, burial, and resurrection. That's what we're doing. Amen. That's what this is all about. That's what, that's what church is. Amen. It's about him. Amen. It's about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And uh, so we have this, this week, we have next week, and then we have resurrection day. So today we're going to talk about his death. And uh, because we want to talk about the death the burial and the resurrection. Now we're not death focused by any stretch of the imagination, but without the death, we wouldn't be alive. Are you with me? We, we, we've got to look at that. And without the death of your flesh, you're not going anywhere. You were crucified with Christ. So death is a big deal to us. Are you with me? Now, the only problem is, is we resurrect that old self and that flesh and get back in it because we have something that God gave us called a free will. And that scares people. I know I'm, I'm not popular about this, but you have a free will. You can override God. Watch out now. Watch out now. You can override God. You have. And so have I. Because God told you to do something, you didn't do it. 
God was leading you somewhere and you didn't do it because you have a free will. Bingo. You have a free will. He gave you that free will. God didn't want a bunch of puppets. He had angels. He got angels. He's got an army. Hey, man. God has an army. And it's the angels. It's not you. Hey, man. Although right now we're going to have to be army people for a while. You know I mean, fighting this, uh, fighting this demonic thing that's going on. But, but I tell you something. I'll tell you something. God wanted you as a family. He wants us to be a family. He wants us to be in fellowship with him. Amen. And so we're going to learn a little bit about death today. I have a lot, a lot of scriptures. So what I want to do, I want a few volunteers to read scriptures. Will, will anybody volunteer uh, to read some? Amen. And, and I'll, uh, I have a mic here. And you have to use the mic. Yeah, great. Uh, um, we'll, uh, we'll pass this thing around. And uh, Rick, you can uh, then take it to the other ones that are going to read, if you wouldn't mind. Or somebody can, you know, whatever. Whatever works for you. But I'm going to read first off, and I, uh, I'm going to give you a few, uh, I'll give you two or three scriptures, Rick. I'm going to give you Mark 15, 39. And I'm going to give you Romans 6, 8. And I'm going to give you 2 Corinthians 5, 15. Can you remember all those? No. No. <laughs> but I got Mark 15:39. Got Mark 15:39. All right. I'll just tell you as we go. All right. But I'm going to read for you Romans chapter 6, amen. I want you to know something. The reason I do this kind of stuff sometimes is because this is not a a spectator sport. This is a, a participation sport. Are you here? Amen. And we need, to, we need to be a part of this. All of us. Amen. That's, that's what this is. We're, we're, we're part of the body of Christ. And in this outpouring, in this incredible awakening that's happening, we all have something to do here. Amen. Amen. So, so get used to being instant in season and out of season. Are you with me? Well, that, that, that's what it is. So I'm going to read for you Romans chapter 6. And verse 8, and it says, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Oh my goodness. Now that is some kind of good word. Amen. Now I, I just really want to get this bathed. In, oh, I, I was going to give Rick that one, but I, never mind, Rick. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm now, and I want to read uh, Romans 6.10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. You see that? Once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Now he took care of sin for everybody. Everybody. And I'm telling you what, that is the, 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 one of the greatest truths that you can ever get your head around. The only deal is, is that you have to accept Jesus to get those benefits. Don't let anybody tell you that he died for somebody and, and took away their sin and you, they don't have to accept him. That's a lie. There's a lie going around right now. There's a major lie going around. It's called universalism and I'll speak out against it uh, on the internet. I don't care if they like me. Because it's wrong and it's messed up. They tell you that everybody's saved. Let me tell you, everybody's not saved. You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died on the cross and God raised him from the dead. And then you'll be saved. Are you with me? Yes. Come on, guys. This is not rocket science. You do not have to be a theologian to figure this out. Amen. We don't have to go to Andrew Womack to figure out if that's true or not. The word says so. And it's the deal. And don't, don't believe them, guys. It's, it's an evil thing. And there's going to be some people that, that, that have rude awakenings one day when they find out that, that they needed to accept Jesus. And, and so it's, that, that's sad to me. That breaks my heart. We want to tell everybody that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Okay, go ahead, Rick, with uh, Mark 15, 39. Mark 
1539 out of the uh, New American Standard. <clears throat> and when a centurion, who was standing right in front of him, saw the way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Oh my goodness, a Roman soldier. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but those guys were mean. We did a passion play for many years, and I played that guy, and that was one of my lines in that, in that uh, play. And uh, it's, it's horrendous when you speak that and you see him hanging on that cross. And we had it so bad that literally people vomited when they saw him coming down the aisle. We had flesh coming off of his back and blood and the whole deal. People left. I mean, it was, it was incredible. And we couldn't do it justice, let me tell you. I, I, I tell you, even, even the, uh, what was the movie? The Passion, the Passion of Christ. And that, was, that was a bloodbath there. And people couldn't stand it, but it, it didn't do it justice. It didn't do what it, they did to Jesus. I mean, when, they, when they, they beat him beyond recognition of a human, they, we, they, they, you know, those guys are so mean it was unreal. But what, the point I want to make with that centurion is that even that guy, that mean, rotten, uh, demonic, evil person got it. And that shows us that Jesus is there for everybody. And he falls, he takes his helmet off and falls down at the cross and said, truly, this is the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Now that is an incredible, incredible verse. I want everybody to know that Jesus died for the rotten people. Amen. Jesus died for that centurion. He died for the people that were killing him, the people that were beating him to death. He died for them. And when they shoved, I'll never forget, we shoved that crown of thorns. I told you about that crown of thorns. We built it. You remember it, Josh? We built that. We got those thorns off a bush down there by the, by the old folks' home down there in Morris. And there's a bush that's got thorns like this on it. And uh, somebody found those thorns and we went down there and snipped them off and built us a, a crown of thorns. And I'm telling you what, that crown of thorns, when you, it, it had cut you. It had cut your hands when you're putting it on him. We, we, we trimmed it out inside because we really weren't shoving those crowns in the guy that was playing Jesus' head. Amen. Remember, Tam? Remember that? We just, Gary, remember that? We shoved that thing down on there? And then we used a rod and we'd shove it down farther. What they did to Jesus was a uh, atrocity. We can't tell you how awful it was. I don't know if you've ever read the medical account of what happened to Jesus. Anybody ever read that? It, it, uh, yeah, me too. And it's just, it's very horrendous. We don't uh, realize what happened. But in that, as we're looking at all of that, everything terrible that happened to him was him literally killing something that you did. Hmm? Every thorn that went in his head, those thorns that went in his head, he showed me this one day, those thorns went in his head to change our thinking. Yeah, Jesus gave us power to overcome our stinking thinking. Amen? I'm telling you, all the things that they did to him, incredible stuff. I got a lot of scriptures to go through here. Rick, you're just on a roll, so just stick with me for a bit. Uh, why don't you read uh, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 5.15. 2 Corinthians 5.15. Let me start at 14. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, that they who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That was for everybody, for you, for me, for every single person. 
what a blessing that is. What a horrendous uh, truth that is to get in our heart. And then he says in uh, uh, Romans 6, 5, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, watch out now, certainly we also shall be the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. You died with Christ. Death is a big deal to you. Amen. We are the church of the living dead. Amen. We could literally be called Grateful Dead. <laughs> Amen. Come on, we're the Grateful Dead, not the man we are, man. We're grateful that we died with him. Listen, how can you be offended if you're dead? Your spirit doesn't get offended. Thank you for that thunderous silence. It means you're processing. It means you're processing. Right? Come on. How can you be offended if you're dead? If you're dead in Christ, you can't be offended. You're dead to self, but you're alive in Christ. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. See, we're dead, but we don't believe it. I, I talk to a lot of people who don't believe they're dead. If you've ever been in a certain counseling mode with me, you'll find out that I'll talk to you about that. And that's why some people hate my guts. I'm serious. I've told some people the truth of the word that they're dead and they're just resurrection, they're dead flesh and they don't like me anymore. In fact, they quit our church because I told them that. And you know, that's okay with me. I can't, I can't help them if you can't help them. Amen. You give somebody the word and they don't receive it, there's nothing I can do about that. That's up to the Holy Ghost. I planted the seed, amen? I planted the seed. And I don't think I'm here to fix people either. Amen, that's not my job. I'm here to plant the word and the Holy Ghost does the rest, amen? Amen, isn't that true? But you are dead to self. Death is a big deal to you. You are dead. Now, I don't want you having a dead focus you know, you don't focus on death, you focus on life, amen? But you have to realize that you're dead. And it's not something that we should be afraid of, amen? Listen, if you're already dead, why would you have a fear of death? Hmm? <laughs> There's an old country song that they said, the guy sings that he says, uh, live like you're dying. Come on. No, I, I correct that, live like you're dead. What, what, nothing can hurt you. Amen. You got to go for it, man. They can, what, what are you, they, can, they can kill you, but they can't eat you. Right, Julie? <laughs> hey, man, what do we... See, that's the problem. We're all afraid to die. Well, if you're already dead, you should, that should have taken away that fear. But it didn't if you don't realize it. Just like Rick's talking about Revelation. Uh, revelation has uh, been taught every which way but loose. And I've studied even the loose. And people have all kinds of crazy ideas about it. But it's the same way with, with any of these things, with death. See, it's the same way with revelation and death. You might, you might want to check out that death in the revelation. There's a lot in there. But when, when we look at this, when we, when we see what he's doing with us and for us, we realize that he killed. See, they, they taught us about dual naturism. They taught us that we have two natures, that we're like, we're, we're, uh, we have this flesh and then we have this new spirit. Well, the flesh is dead. If the flesh is dead, then you don't have a dual nature. You don't have two natures. You know, the sin nature died with Christ. See, people don't believe that because we're taught because of cemetery, I mean seminary, that, um, that people are, te yeah, I was right the first time, but, but, uh, but we, we're, we're taught that and everybody's been taught that in church for decades, for, for hundreds of years. They've been taught that. Come on. Guys, we gotta rise above and go into this truth of the gospel that you are dead in Christ. You don't have, your old nature's dead. Amen? 
You died with Christ. Amen. Now you have a new life. A new life in Christ. You, you, you have risen. He said, we just read the scripture. If you died with him, then you live with him. Are you with me? If you died with Christ, how did you die with Christ? You accepted him. You believed. Amen. That was the day. Amen. Amen. That was the day you did it. And everybody has the option. Don't believe the lie that, there, that there's some people don't. It's a lie. It's a lie. John Calvin taught that you uh, were picked. <laughs> you know, that some of you are wheat and some of you are tares. And I sat under one of those teachers. Oh my God. And he was an incredible teacher. He gets you believing it. That scared me. Well, am I a terror? That brings terror. <laughs> Sorry. It does. It brings terror. It brings fear to people. It's awful. It's evil. It's not true. Jesus died for all. How, how many scriptures have we seen already today that said that? Huh? No, he, he died even, even for those people that might be terrors because they don't accept him. But they have a choice. You have a choice to accept Jesus. Amen? You have a choice today to accept if you're dead or not. I got, I got to get to these scriptures. These are just incredible scriptures. And um, let's see, Rick. I'll do Romans 10, 4, and you do, did we already do Romans 10, 4? No, I'll do Romans 10, 4, and you do Matthew 27, 46, Rick. I'll do 10, 4, 10, 4. 10, 4? All right, Romans 10, 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Amen? Hello? Christ is the end of the law. Why? It was fulfilled. Why? Because it died with him. See, it died. The law's dead. You're not, the, you're not under the law. You're under? Grace. Thank you. Amen? You had unmerited favor, and you've got the power of God working in and through you. Go ahead, Rick. Matthew 27, 46, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, death, anybody know the definition of death? Thank you. That's what it is. Death is separation from God. Did you know right there, he was separated from God. You know why? So you didn't have to be. Ha, <laughs> ha, wow. Hey guys, I'm telling you what, this is not too hard. This is easy for us to get. It's easy for us to get. Just let the Spirit of God show you what he's saying to you today. He's telling you something big. You've got to be dead to self. You cannot hear, have that fear of death. You already died. Why would you be afraid of it? You've already been through it. Amen. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So if your old carcass dies, you just go to be with him. You don't, you don't lose. You win. Amen? Amen. There's no loss in this thing anywhere. And we believe living live life to its fullest. We tell people we don't work. We don't play. We don't go on vacation. We, we, we don't do any of that stuff. We live. Amen? We don't do ministry. We live. Every day. We just live. That's life. That's what it's all about. It's life. Amen? It's about his life. Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? So we live all the time. We're with him. Amen? Now, dead, if you're dead in the flesh, why are you still doing fleshly things? Oh, does that hurt? Where does that come in? 
Where does that come in? You, if you're dead to self, you're not doing stupid stuff. Whew. Processing, right? Processing. See, how can it be? Let me tell you what, when you're doing the stupid stuff, I'm not gonna name them, you already know what they are, right? Everybody knows what the stupid things are, right? All the addictions, all the stuff that we, we do and we say that it's not an addiction. Huh? All of that stuff. If you're dead to self, then why are you doing that? Is Christ making you do it? And you can't figure out why you can't hear the voice of God? It's because we're, our minds are not renewed to the image of Christ. Exactly right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, because they're not renewed to the death. See, you, that part, it's part of that renewal of your mind is when you realize that you died with him. And so your flesh is dead. Why do you, do, why do you still have the addiction? You know what? You can overcome an addiction like that when you realize that fact, that that died with him. It works. But that mind has to be renewed, Rick. That's right, uh, Romans chapter 12. You, you, you got to get that. You got to get that. You got to let that be renewed. Let, let's do some more scriptures here. I just want to get through a few more. I have a list of a bazillion. Oh, let's do... Uh, Let's see, where am I here? 1 Corinthians 15, 22. We didn't do that one yet, did we? For as in Adam all die, even in Christ all shall be made alive. What? Everybody dies. That's what that says. Amen? And that's one of the lousiest things ever. We have a fear of it. We don't want to die. We don't want our family to die. You know, we just had our cousin die. Uh, what, yesterday, Tam, is Tracy die? Our, our cousin Tracy in um, Florida just passed away. And I don't think she was 65 yet, right? She's 60. Not even 60. Wow. So too young. We hate that. We hate that. But it happens to people, people die, right? Well, it doesn't, the, how you can get through that death of, of, of people is knowing that you're, you died with Christ yourself. And if you died with Christ, then when her body left, I have a peace because I talked to her about Jesus, amen? I have a peace in my, my heart that she's with him. And because I understand that I died with Christ and so did she, that we're okay. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Oh my goodness. Rick, why don't you look at uh, uh, Luke 23:34, And uh, let's see what that says in your Bible. And I will look at John 19, 26. Luke 23, 34 for you. Oops, wrong chapter. No, what did I say? Yeah, 23, 34, yeah. Okay, uh, Luke 23, <clears throat> 34. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. What did he say? Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. You know how important that is? You know, that's part of the death. Is forgiving people. See, your forgiveness... <clears throat> doesn't happen because you forgive him. It happens because he forgave them. And when you realize he forgave them, then you can forgive them. Does that make sense? Amen? You, that forgiveness is, that's how I pray for forgiveness. I don't know how. 
I mean, somebody hurt me really bad. Somebody, I wanted to kill somebody that molested my niece. I wanted to kill him. I had murder in my heart. I had a plan, man. I did. I was going to run him over with a semi. I was that angry. Thank God for a good pastor. He got me, and I called him. I told him, I'm, I'm heading, I'm taking a semi over to uh, wherever the guy lived, and I'm, when he crosses the street, I'm going to run over him. I'm going to get that semi going as fast as it'll go, and I'm going to hit him when he crosses the street. That's what I had in my heart. And my pastor took me aside. He said, you will do no such thing. Thank God. Thank God. Amen? That, that happens to people. That's real. That's real stuff. It happened to me. And I went to God. He said, we're going to pray, and then you're going to go listen to God. And I went and listened to God. He said, just let me do it, son. And I had a revelation right then of Father, of this scripture right there. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I forgave that guy, and I actually shook his hand. I did. That is not me. That is supernatural. That is supernatural. Amen? Amen. Forgiveness is supernatural. Don't ever forget that. When you got to forgive somebody that's impossible, that hurts you real bad, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It works every time. Every time it works. It's real. That's God. That's part of the death. So you have to be dead to self enough to let it go to him. Are you with me? You're dead. You're dead to that pain. You can't have that pain. You're dead to it. That's only in your flesh. Come on. Your spirit's perfect. Your spirit isn't there. Your spirit is not in unforgiveness. Your, your, your spirit is perfect as Jesus. Wow. That, that, that just boggles my mind sometimes. I just said, that's come out of my mouth. I went over there, what did you say? You know, it's like, what? Do you feel like that sometimes? It's like, whoa, that's too good to be true. But it's true. Amen. Let, let, let's do a couple more. Gosh, where does time go? Time goes too fast. Wow. Huh? Wow. Let's see. Uh, let's go John 19, 26, and 27. And then, Rick, you get ready for John 19, 30, okay? John 19... Twenty-six. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, who was that? John. Absolutely. John, I loved it because John went around saying, Jesus loves me. <laughs> and a lot of people thought, he, the one when he says, the one who Jesus loved, well, he just knew the love of Jesus. Are you with me? He wasn't trying to be haughty or weird. He, he, he knew that Jesus loved him. That's a revelation to him. Amen? I'd receive that one, wouldn't you? Wow. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom, lo whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Wow, isn't that awesome? What a blessing. Oh, wow, and from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Jesus per commissioned him to take care of his mom. Amen. Is that awesome or what? Uh, you know, that might be a word for you. Maybe you need to take care of your mom. That's what somebody told Mona. Amen. I think his name was Jesus. Amen. Come on. You've got to take care of each other. Praise God. Amen. Go ahead, Rick. 1930, John. 1930, beginning of 29, a jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine upon a branch of hyssop and brought it up to his mouth. 
When Jesus therefore had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Wow, wow, wow. The point I want to make there, he said, it is finished. That's the only point I want to make right there. It is finished. I'm going to do this real quick. I'm sorry, Julia, we're going over time here. But um, Jesus died so we can live. His last words were, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son. And he said to John, behold your mother. I thirst. It is finished. <clears throat> Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Oh. Oh. Wow. He died we died. Our flesh is dead. How could we any longer serve the flesh? What he took for us? Just that alone. How can we serve the flesh? And we all have. I'll be the first to raise my hand. I have. Haven't you? We all have. But let me tell you what. When you do, just realize it. Get over yourself and realize that you are dead in Christ. He died so that we could live. He died so that you didn't have to have that definition of being separated from God. See, we won't have that death. Some called it the second death. We, we won't have that separation from God. We, we die, our body dies to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord but we will not be separated from him. Amen? Amen? You're never going to be separated from him. So today I want to make sure that everybody knows that Jesus died for you, that he died on the cross, and he wants you to believe that so that you can be saved. He wants you to believe that he died, he became your sin, he died, your sin died, your flesh died, your old man died, your old nature died, whatever you want to call it, died so that you could have life. Amen? And you could have life abundant. Amen? So that death had to happen. Amen? So you realize it? Say this with me. Say, Lord, I believe today that you died for me and that I died with you so that I could be saved. I trust you as my Lord and my Savior. I trust you as my righteousness and every good thing. I believe you today. I believe in you today. Thank you for saving my soul. Fill me with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you did that for the first time, tell somebody about it. Or if you did that for the time that it really counted, tell somebody about it. Amen. Would you? Amen. We love you all. We had a ball. Adios, uh, people out there in Cyberland. See you next time.